Whenever I think about the young folks that died as teenagers, even the ones who was in the streets full time, I think about my own past, and then I think about how many of those young guys could have made a difference later, if only they were lucky. Why do we end a life when all any of us want to do is breathe? Imagine being charged with a crime you didn't commit. And not just any crime, we talking about murder. This was the case for Halim Face Flowers that was featured in a Thug Life in DC documentary. Look at how young he was, just 16 and ended up serving 22 years in prison. The juvenile block at DC jail in 97 when they released the HBO special was just as bad as the adult blocks, if not worse. Andre, who went by Bruno from Southeast, was like the main focus and star of the project. Charged with attempted murder for shooting the cop in the neck, one day on the south side changed his life forever. It's kind of hard to believe in full uniform, uh, in a marked police car, that someone would walk up behind a uniformed police officer and shoot him from behind. The bullet entered the uh, right rear side of my neck and exited right here, uh, the front next to my throat. Uh, like I said, the first time it, it felt like a sledgehammer, believe me. It felt like being hit by a sledgehammer. Uh, slammed to the ground, both knees, hands and knees, uh, got up, stumbled out, uh, fell once again. Uh, I guess the way I survived is thinking of my children, thinking I didn't want to die on Martin Luther King Avenue. I believe if you if you do the crime, you do the time. That's that's the way I look at it. Uh, you're 14, 15, 16 years of age. And you know very well what you're doing is wrong. I wish he could have got more time. On the screen, Andre's little brother Kevin was very young, watching his big brother go from the jail to Lawton. And you can see Bruno telling his mom she need to move up out of D.C. because his little brother is going to go down the same path. And you got to, I think best way, man, move him out of D.C. That's what I say, move him out of D.C. That's be his only opportunity to move him from out of the area because, man, this, our area, man, uh, it's a lot of pressure, man. In 10 years, I'm going to keep it real with him. 10 years, I've seen him being hit with that old kid because right now he already similar as me. He, he hyped. And he got your shoulder, man. Shoulder be tripping. In 10 years, man, he gonna be, I got my eyes. 10 years, I got him being locked up if he don't go the right path. He right, he right. I probably will be in here. His thoughts about Kevin were spot on because years later, Lord Kevin will find himself behind bars. And not only that, but also he was charged with assault on an officer. Basically, he ran him over while the officer was on his police bike. Kevin would later be charged, convicted, and sentenced to 15 years in prison. So in the documentary, Bruno referenced Thug Life quite a bit. Coincidentally, at that time, Tupac and Scarface were both a big influence in the city. Even when the guys are freestyling, they use lines like, do your like Jesse James, which Scarface has a song where he says the same thing. 97 and the cops want to know my name. Just because I'm black, they say that I'm insane. Try to do my like Jesse James. Try to me, this was the beginning of some very dark times in the city. Because we are the crack babies, born in the 80s. From young mothers, some being teenagers when they had us, born in chaos and raised in the noise. Thug life in D.C., as sad as it was, it was a perfectly executed documentary highlighting a problem bigger than the juvenile block in D.C. jail. Follow me. Another day on the south side. These teens toting big guns out here, killing without sympathy for the opposition. The blocks they come from and the built up frustration is all they know. There's a darkness hovering over certain parts of the south side. The living proof is in the youngest that it conquered. You can see it in their eyes, man. His soul is missing. 
This young man named Michael Mason was charged at 16 years old with four murders, including a young lady named Bria Moon and 20-year-old Giselle Henderson. This the D.C. that the government ignored for a long time. The D.C. that politicians stayed clear of. Yeah, the South Side. Southeast to be exact. And as the makeover take place all around, man, we will never forget what happened. Never forget Arthur Capers happened. The Valley. And a list of others that produced the YGs of the South Side. The Young Gangsters. He's an innocent bystander and got maced. Now I gotta take him to the hospital. Police are called out to a DC high school after a fight leads to mace being sprayed and students running for cover. This all went down late this afternoon at Baloo High School. All right, well, back here at home, you could say it still has that new school smell. The $150 million Frank W. Baloo High School built from the ground up. Now, for years, Baloo High School and WJLA, we've had a nice, close yes. relationship with a lot of the students and the people there. And the school celebrated the opening today of the biggest high school in D.C. That's Baloo now. D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford takes us there to the school, which is right next door to the old one. With Baloo's award-winning band setting the tone, students, alums, and city officials got ready for a celebration. I'm looking at my script here, and we have words like high-quality learning environment. Man, this, this place is just a bomb, all right? Baloo's gone from being the most dilapidated high school in D.C. to the brightest, shiniest, and you could see it in the kids' faces. I feel blessed. Good. Yeah, that feels wonderful. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it make you want to come here and learn and get on your feet and do something, man, you know? When you, like, when I first came here, it just, I ain't think about outside. I'm just thinking about in here. The school has two gyms and a swimming pool in this building. Eight at 356,000 square feet, this is the biggest school in D.C. The 2000s brought on a new level of beef and recklessness that spilled over into the school building. Literally, blood spilled on the school ground. Welcome to Baloo High School, the new Baloo, located on 4th Street Southeast, in what was and still is a hot zone for crime. Here's Baloo before the makeover with its old reddish brick building, completely different from today. This is one of the most well-known, vicious, and violent high schools in D.C., from shooting crap in the hallways, students leaving in and out of the building, and even getting weapons inside the school avoiding the metal detective altogether. Two rival neighborhoods in Southeast being Bury Farms and Condon Terrace both attended the school during some of its worst days. Tension was always high. Fights would break out and students were shot outside of the school and even one young male was murdered inside the school. December 18, 2002 at 12.45 p.m. A male teacher saw four male students gambling in the cafeteria. The teacher entered and confiscated a hat from the head of one of the students. The student attempted to retrieve his hat and the teacher informed him that he could get it back at 3.15. The student positioned himself in a threatening manner and the teacher held his arm up to protect himself. Another student then struck the teacher and all four began punching and kicking the teacher. The teacher was left with a broken elbow police placed all four of them under arrest. September 15, 2003, a female special ed student assaulted another female student outside the main office. She grabbed the girl by the hair and repeatedly punched her in the face. When the student fell to the floor, she stomped her head, leaving the gash and swollen right eye. November 5, 2003, 3 p.m., Five security guards witnessed someone standing on 4th and Trenton Street Southeast, right across from Baloo, shooting a handgun towards the school. The witnesses pushed the students back into the school building and notified the police. Officers chased the suspect to Hart Middle School, where they caught him and got his 38 caliber long nose revolver. Luckily, no one was hit that day.
February 2nd, 2004, a brawl broke out at Baloo that started with two guys nicknamed J-Rock and TJ and ended with the Burry Farms neighborhood and Connor Terrace at the center of the fight. J-Rock, the star football player and senior who was down with the Connor Terrace neighborhood was shot and killed by TJ from Burry Farms. It is believed that TJ entered the school with a firearm through the side door that had been left slightly open. Because of a two hour delay due to icy conditions, the hallways were crowded with students not yet in class. J-Rock was outside of the daycare center on the first floor when he was shot. J-Rock was flown to Washington Hospital Center where he was pronounced dead around 11.30 a.m. TJ ran home immediately after the shooting and would later turn himself in the next day. It was the first fatal shooting inside a D.C. public school since 1996 when a student was shot in a stairwell at Winston Education Center in Southeast. That same darkness that hovered over certain youngers on the south side also seemed to hover over Baloo and the area that surrounded it. Some people think they need to close the doors for good. Baloo made national news in November 2017 when NPR reported that the school allowed dozens of students to graduate in 2017 despite missing weeks of class. The investigation found that half of the school's graduates missed more than three months of school. One in five students was absent more than present, missing more than 90 of 180 days of school. A story you'll see only on WUSA 9 tonight, the family of that teenager who died 19 days after being attacked at Baloo High School. Well, the family's now speaking out. They say Jovan Patterson Smith was bullied and beaten inside of a classroom earlier this month. He spent weeks in and out of the hospital, suffered brain damage, and later died. Police are calling this case a death investigation for now. Jovan's family told our Michael Quander they're calling it murder. I was devastated to see him like that. It was hard for Letitia Page to hold it together as she relived those painful memories. She says her cousin, Jovan Patterson Smith, was attacked inside of Baloo High School three weeks ago. Kick him all in his head, tase him. She says the 17-year-old who lived with special needs was bullied for years. The behavior plastered on his Instagram, people calling him nerd, idiot, and other expletives. His parents made complaints to the school. But this time, Page says the bullying went too far. According to this police report, Javon was jumped because he didn't let other students use his cell phone. Family members said they took the teen to the hospital the next day when he started coughing and spitting up blood. Javon started having seizures and was admitted to the hospital at least three times in the last three weeks. Page says Jovan's brain swelled. He was declared brain dead and he later died on Monday. This, these kids took his life. They definitely took his life and they, they need to pay for it. They need to be made an example because this cannot keep on going on. There are no arrests and no charges in this case because right now, D.C. police say they're still investigating. This was a murder. This was a homicide. This was not just a death. Reporting in Southeast D.C., Michael Quander, WUSA 9. Police are waiting on autopsy results to figure out exactly how he died right now. January 18th, 2018. 17 year old Jovan Patterson Smith, a special needs student at Baloo, was jumped by some kids in the classroom after refusing to let them use his cell phone. The report said he was beat up pretty bad, kicked all in the head, and more. He was taken to the hospital, released, and then admitted again after having seizures. He would be declared brain dead and died on a Monday evening just 19 days after the attack at Baloo. The family said that Jovan had dealt with bullying from other students in the past. He ran track, he was set to graduate that year, and uh, police at the time said they were waiting on an autopsy and that they wouldn't rule it as a homicide at the time. I haven't seen an update on that case, so if anyone heard of or know of the situations, please share it in the comment section. Many students haven't been so lucky over the years, like Jalen Willard, just 15 years old, who had only been at Baloo for one week 
back in 2018, he literally transferred to Baloo just one week before he was murdered. Jim Sean, homicides across the district remain high. They are still up from this same time last year, and they're especially high east of the river in Ward 7 and Wards 8. Now, just this month alone, there has been a spate in homicides, including homicides for those under the age of 18 years old, including for this young boy, 15 year old Jalen Wheeler. He was a high school student, a football player at Baloo High School. He was shot dead last week as he walked home from school. And tonight, the community gathered in. Congress Heights just feet from where he was killed. They walked a mile and a half demanding the violence stop. And for the first time tonight, we heard from Jalen's mother, who says in the past year, she's lost five close family members to gun violence, including her son and Jalen's father. I don't believe nothing God beefing over is worth God's lives. That's right. On both ends. On both ends. To the ones who pull the trigger, it's not worth your life. That's right. And it's not worth the life that you take it. Because now you're going to have to face the consequences of whatever happens to you once you take a life. And then your parents got to pick up the pieces. And then your parents got to pick up the pieces and bury their children. And we lost a great asset to our community. That's right. Jaden was an awesome person. Yes. I seen Jaden on the steps of my porch every day last week before he got killed. Monday, Tuesday, and y'all know what happened on Wednesday. No child should go to school and worry about if they're going to come home. No mother should have to worry about if their child is going to come home safely. So the Washington Post reported that Wheeler was the sixth person to die between the ages of 14 and 17 in the district at that time in May of 2018. One of the more recent sad cases in June of this year, 2022, 16-year-old Tanaya Jones, a Baloo High School student, was murdered right on 3rd Street Southeast by a 17-year-old boy from Oxon Hill, Maryland. That case still open, but rest in peace to her and every student that lost their life inside or near Baloo. Unimaginable grief for a D.C. mother mourning the loss of her 16-year-old daughter, Tanaya Jones, a sophomore at Baloo High School in Southeast. Tanaya's mom says her daughter had big dreams of being a pediatrician. She was an awesome person, so smart, considering that was my person, and they took her away from me. She says her daughter was shot and killed last night. According to D.C. police, the shooting took place in the Washington Highlands neighborhood around 6 o'clock. None of them would get a chance to grow and mature into responsible adults. Their lives were cut short. They weren't so lucky. And obviously, I'm not blaming the school Baloo for all of those situations. I understand the area is a hot zone for violent crimes. However, Baloo has seen some really dark times without question. I know the kids basically adapt and overcome and keep it pushing. Some of them just trying to make the best out of their situation. That's the motto for life period, to keep on pushing, making it to see another day, another day on the south side. Sometimes it's a beautiful day, sometimes it's great energy, like graduation day or even prom, as the fellas and girls prep their outfits, families chipping in so they could pull up clean limo style. Looking forward to their dates, showing up and showing out, feeling like a million bucks, or two lifelong friends sharing the moment, taking it all in. Thankful to be alive. Thankful to see another day. Another day on the south side. Don't play.